The classic rock genre has its roots in the music of the 40s and 50s. Late 1940s, 50s rock and roll. So everything is built off of Carl Perkins, Ike Turner, Elvis Presley. But I think the 50s, like I wouldn't look at 50s rock and roll and say that's classic rock because it's old. I would say that's rock and roll that comes from rockabilly. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it has its own place and its own feel to it. In the music of the classic rock genre, there are all kinds of influences. Samba, reggae, soul, R&B, rockabilly, bluegrass, doo-wop, Motown. It goes on and on. But there are seven primary influences which most of the music of the classic rock genre is based off of. And in particular, there's a bluesy type of scale called the pentatonic scale. And that is really critical in the music of classic rock. The single biggest foundation is the blues and in particular, the pentatonic scale. Well, uh, your basic blues minor pentatonic scale would be the root, the minor third, the fourth, the fifth, and then the seventh, flat seven. Why don't you show me? I hate that guitar. All right, classic rock has never played on a nylon string guitar, but since our illustrious documentary man owns one, here's your A pentatonic scale. I made it sound a little more interesting than it is, but one, two, three, four, five notes, and here's your octave, which is not considered an extra note in the scale. So, there you go. And that's the pentatonic scale, essentially. Yes. So, so that's the root of classic rock, you could argue, essentially, right? Yes, now. especially this, you know, when you do it up an octave and then you fool around with it, but I refuse to do that on this guitar because the strings feel like worms. Pentatonic. The pentatonic scale is the foundation of the classic rock sound, exemplified by bands such as Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin. If you hear anyone from Stevie Ray Vaughan, Muddy Waters to B.B. King, there's, there is that pentatonic sound of that scale, which is in essence what blues is. Anyone, my dad or my grandmother, would hear a note and go, well, that sounds bluesy, and that is that essence. So I think even when you're talking about a band like Rush, from Led Zeppelin to Yngwie Malmsteen, when those guys start to shred, they are still in that box of that pentatonic world that is in essence the blues scale and the foundation of blues music. Well, if you look at those bands that you just mentioned, say Zeppelin, go back a little bit further from Zeppelin to the Yardbirds, to the Stones, even to the Beatles and the Kinks, this is where the rock thing, the hard rock thing that you're talking about began. And it was born out of the blues without Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters, for instance. Led Zeppelin wouldn't have had some of their biggest hits. The Rolling Stones might not have had not only their hits, but the name of their band, the Rolling Stones, came from a song that was popular from Muddy Waters, his song, Rolling Stone. Their song, Satisfaction, was basically a reworking of his theme, I Can't Be Satisfied. Rock came out of the blues. It came directly out of the blues. The blues influenced everybody in the rock and roll, without question. It gave the electric guitar with distortion a blues feel. It gave Eric Clapton the ability to, to hit a note and make it sing. And it gave all the vocalists something to work from. <laughs> that's a look that. How does that go? <laughs> that one. <laughs> but the roots of all music certainly goes back to the classics and the classical composers. They were the ones that, that really developed what we know now as melody and arrangement and dynamics. Mm -hmm. 
would agree wholly that the blues underpinning, that's the departure point to all of rock. Very American-based influences started rock, but the introduction of outside influences, and particularly classical music, those are, those are important elements that kind of found their way in. You can definitely hear the difference between rock from Europe as opposed to rock from America. It does sound different. At home in America, people grew up listening to blues and jazz. At home in, in Europe, people grew up listening to classical music, studying classical music. And I think the first time that I really fully noticed that, probably the Revolver album of the Beatles, the first time I heard String Quartet and Eleanor Rigby, that, that is, Eleanor Rigby is an entirely classically kind of underpinned piece of music. The one you're painting is where Ringo lived? No, John. John lived here and Ringo lived downstairs? No, Ringo, did, no, Ringo never lived here, he just owned it. Oh, okay. He it here and downstairs. Classical music is a very European, British type of influence on the story of classic rock. And the same can be said for skiffle music. the single most important person that a lot of folks haven't heard of when it comes to not only blues, but rock and roll. There was a fellow named Lonnie Donegan who kind of invented skiffle music in Britain and was the biggest influence on the Beatles. It became rock and roll. It was the sort of roots of rock and roll in England, but probably not in America. You know, in America, I don't know where it came from. Jazz has been an influence on major rock drummers. They're not playing just a steady beat. They're playing all over the place, which is what jazz drummers do. On the drums, the local boy just like us. Mike Portnoy on the drum, drum. They're playing an improvised beat, which is complementing what they're hearing. The other musicians, they're reacting. So a lot of these guys, when rock started out, that's what they were doing. They were reacting to what they heard the guitars or the vocals or the bass doing. And that's what jazz did. Mitch Mitchell and John Bonham, even Charlie Watts. You gotta remember, Charlie Watts was a jazz drummer before he joined the Stones. And he still is a jazz drummer to this day. He plays in one of the big, biggest rock bands ever, the Rolling Stones, right? So, I mean, there's, that's the concrete evidence that jazz has, as far as drumming, influenced heavily rock music. In classic rock, the traditions of learning how to be a good percussionist, that element's being pulled up from jazz. It includes the voice as well. The voice is also an instrument. So when you're listening to rock music, you listen to, uh, to the lead singers of rock bands. Their voices are really exploring the extremes of the, of the vocal, of, of the voice's ability. So rock players have utilized that concept, if you will. The influences of jazz come through. So I'll give you an example, uh, like a song like Stairway to Heaven. In, in the beginning intro of it, there's a, you know, that descending line, and you know, at some point it falls into an F major seventh chord, which essentially is a jazz chord, right? So th there's the harmonic influence of, of jazz in a song like Stairway to Heaven, which is sort of, a song that everyone knows. Church music. A lot of the early rock singers of Sam Cooke and Marvin Gaye and whatnot that were getting hit records were, uh, were gospel singers. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think real rock and roll was born you know, with Elvis and Bill Haley and uh, Little Richard. Little Richard was somebody who, who learned what he learned from church and all of his uh, shtick on the piano and his uh, dancing around and the, the warbling, all of that is thing, are things that he learned when he was in church. That, that kind of flat out, they call it flat footed singing, the surge singing, so where you're singing with the, um, these long drawn out notes but also the power. Um, you know, people like Mahalia Jackson um, were definitely, and Clara Ward, these are the people that influenced, like Mick Jagger, and those, they would listen to what was going on and then emulate it. Yeah. 
folk music is another key component of the musical foundation of classic rock, exemplified by artists such as Bob Dylan and Joan Baez, especially coming from the folk music scene at Washington Square Park. But we'll expand on that a little bit later in the film. The people that would say that the blues are the biggest influence on it are probably right, ultimately, but to me the close second place would be country. The blues and country have always had this kind of like uh, little, little dance going on of like influencing each other. And certainly with rock and roll, I think, you know, you look at the, the, some of the early big hits of rock and roll and they were very country influenced. A lot of Elvis's records, the Everly Brothers, Chet Atkins produced those records. And then the Beatles covered Buck Owens songs, you know. Uh, so clearly country had a, a, a big influence on the evolution of rock and roll. In, in middle America, a Bob Seger was part of it. It was a different rock movement. A Cheap Trick was a Midwestern, the archetype of a Midwestern band, Nugent was Midwestern. These artists were selling bucket loads of records and these people remain stalwarts of classic rock. There are seven primary musical roots of classic rock. Blues, classical, country, folk, gospel, jazz, and skiffle. There are other influences as well, but these are the central seven. It's the melding together of those ideas where I think some of the greatest classic rock has, has emerged. <laughs> It's when electricity was introduced to music. That's the beginning to me of, of, of where classic rock begins. That was a clip from my movie, What is Classic Rock? If you want to see the full movie, What is Classic Rock? The links are available in the description box below. Everything I do is original, so make sure to subscribe for more.